So you want to make a quote from CPQ. For me, CPQ is all about the data and the structure of your product. And this structure you want to perfectly resemble in your quote. So in our demo, we are selling cars and you can see in the cars that there is a very good structure on how you sell these cars. There are two models on the main lines that are uh, bundles of uh, packages, uh, uh, entertainment pack, for instance. There are options on these uh, entertainment packs that you can choose. So everything is nicely structured. And this is also very clear to my customer on how these packages are structured and how these cars are actually built uh, up from, from these packages. This is what we want to show in the structure of our document. Okay, in our demo document, how does this structure look? I will show you. Just click a button here and the document is immediately there. So that's how fast it goes. So we can see it in the previewer, but I'm just going to open it in full screen. So just to show you, this is the structure of our car. This is exactly what this car shows us. So this is exactly what's in the edit lines. It's our car. Our car has some option packs, so the entertainment pack, as you just saw, and every pack has a set of options belonging to it. And this is the structure that your customer understands. This is the structure that your products uh, resemble, and this is what you want to bring in your quote. So going from a complex data structure in CPQ, how do you make it show like this in your quote? And this is what we're going to build step by step today. Okay, let's go, let's start. And I'm going to start actually from a Word document. Uh, this document, of course, has much more features, but these are just some single items, some formatting done. So uh, that's all clear. You can find that in the uh, Academy on our website. Uh, but we're going to focus on this part as this is really the CPQ data. Cool. How do we start? We start in a Word document, of course. And I just have here with me an empty Word document. So nothing is in there. It's completely blank and we're going to start from scratch. And I'm going to show you step by step how we add information on these cars. Okay, first step is we're going to add a table. A table in PDF Butter is the structure that we are going to use. So when you add a table, you see this empty space here in the beginning. This is the first thing I always remove. So we go to uh, table settings, options, and I'm just going to remove all of the padding in my table. And of course, in my result, I'm always going to switch back to this one. You don't see a table. So actually, the table is just a, a placeholder for our structure. And I'm going to say that I do not want any edges in my table. OK, uh, what I'm do are going to do is going to, uh, no, I'm going to do that at the end. OK, what I'm now going to do is just take these kind of things. So say model, then from the model, I go and I add the items. Um, this is going to take a lot of time. So I have one uh, prepared and I'm just going to copy paste the information from that one always uh, to this one. So, uh, and you can download actually this uh, uh, complete document from our uh, academy so that you can use it as a starter point for your development. Okay, so instead of uh, typing it in front of you, I'm just going to copy paste it here. So this is the top of our uh, car that we want to uh, actually repeat. So this is actually this part, uh, this, this text. And we want to repeat that for every car in our uh, in our quote lines. So there were actually two cars. So this is the same stuff. OK, cool. We also want to say, as you can see here, that we want to keep all of this information together on one page. So very important. Let's go to some uh, word uh, options. We are going to say that we never want to split this line when it uh, goes over a page. So it means that uh, Word will automatically, and our uh, processors as well, will automatically say, okay, this is not fitting 
entirely on one page uh, or so uh, on the same page as before so i'm just going to move everything to the next page that's how we uh, how we do it okay cool so what we have now is this top part and you know what i'm just going to take you through it step by step and i want to fill up this top part so we can uh, close this one for now I'm going to create a new doc config. That's what we always do. It's going to be a main Word document, of course. Uh, how are we going to call it? We're going to call it uh, Academy CPQ Training 1. Okay, let's give it a name. And of course, we probably want to give it also the quote uh, number, for instance. Quote number, and this one is for the title, so I'm just going to put it title attachments. I don't want to save it, I just want to generate it and look at it. I don't want to save it, so I'm just going to take base 64 here. Okay, let's go. Yeah, that's our quote already. And of course, we cannot start before we are selecting data. So let's go to uh, let's create a data source. Um, sorry, let's create a data source new data source of the type Sockle. We're going to call it Academy um, Main Quote Lines Training 1. It's going to be a list of objects and I'm just going to type I'm just going to click OK. So we haven't right, written any Sockle because we're going to use our Sockle Builder uh, much easier. So what we want to do actually is get information from quote lines. So we're going to filter here on the quote lines. So uh, it might take a second or two because you can see there are loads of objects here. So uh, feed quote line, this is the quote line. Just going to check the API name. Yeah, it comes from the CPQ package. So this is the item I want. What kind of information do I want from the quote line? Of course, I want the quote ID. So I'm just going to uh, filter on the quotes. Uh, you can get information from the quote as well if you follow this relationship, but I just want the ID for now to filter, to know that it's uh, I'm only going to select lines that are actually linked to this one. Um, I'm going to take the, uh, the ID, the record ID, I think it's called. Yeah, the record ID. So I'm going to take the record ID. I'm going to take the uh, um, the price. Um, which price I'm going to take? It's just an example. So uh, let's take the uh, um, the net unit price. Okay, uh, is there no total price? Total net total. Let's take this one. Okay, cool. So uh, this one as well. So we have now the uh, um, the model. Uh, we're going to select a field called required by. So we, we will see that these required by fields in CPQ actually indicate uh, if there is a parent line item, a quote line item. So we are the top level. So we will not have any parent quote line items. That's clear. So we're going to select this one because we want to actually filter on this one that there is no required by filled. And that's how we know we're going to take the top level uh, line items linked to that quote. Cool. So um, what's next? What else do we need? Um, we're going to need some data from the product. So I'm going to follow this product relationship and I will they take the name of the product, product name, and I'm going to take the uh, one-liner. Okay, can I take the English one, and I'm going to take the description. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to take the English one. Okay, so everybody that knows PDF Butter knows now I need to add an, uh, a filter on the record ID. So to know that we will only select the uh, quote lines linked to the quote we're working on. 
add this one already, but also I want actually that the required by field is empty. So what I've done now is I've written my query and I said, give me only information that links to my current quotes and give me only the top, uh, the, the main line items that are required by is uh, empty. Save my query. Let me show you what I mean. So I want to, if I see my, my quote line items, you can see that this Erendo, so this is my car, that's the top level one. And when I select this one, you see that required by field is empty. When I go back and I select, for instance, this pack, you will see that the required by, oh, sorry, I, this is the product. Let's go to look at the quote line. You will see that this required by is filled and the parent is the car, of course, yeah, because it was the pack. So everything looks great. We can uh, now go back to our quote. So we have selected our data. Um, we have a doc config. So what's next? Let's go to this doc config. Open up PDF Butler. Okay, um, we need to upload our document. So it's gonna save it. Go to um, info. Close it. Okay, select it. And don't think this is allowed. Yeah, okay, so let's go to get the document, open it again, CPQ lines empty. I'm going to save it. Oh. Copy Opslan and I'm going to save it under downloads. Okay, so it's now saved under downloads. So what I'm just going to do is get it from the my downloads. Okay, save the server. And of course, I need an alternative name. I'm just going to call it AN from the English version. Okay, that's that. Everything is there. Add the data source. Now we want the data source uh, that we just created. It was called something with uh, Academy. Yeah, this is the one. Okay, looks good. So now I'm gonna add a config type. And which config type did I add? So first config type I wanna do is say to the system, repeat this table. Repeat this table for every line in uh, my main line items. So for every car that actually is in my is uh, linked to, to this uh, quote. So I'm going to call this table. So this will identify the table to uh, to repeat. Okay. Uh, how many times do I have to repeat it for every record in this data source? Which table uh, to repeat? Okay. Identified by this uh, merge field. Uh, I only want a single spacing, no criteria required. Okay, that's cool. So we have that. Step two is now to add some uh, some one-on-one -on -one replacements. So we have a single, we can use a parent data source. So the parent data source knows that we are repeating uh, every, for every record in our data source. Um, and we want the name of the product here. Merge field is this one. Okay, second is, so we have this one now. Second is the one liner that we have for our car. So again, we are going to add an extra single here. Um, we're going to call the one liner. Merge field is the field that's in our documents. Okay, and the last one, the description. So let's copy this one, the description. Uh, we want to have the description field here and the description, the merge field, so that it knows it's which one to use in our documents. Okay, save the server. Everything is perfectly okay, so that went well. What we now should do is uh, take the ID of our doc config, and we're going to just 
add this one to the configuration of our lightning components here so to make sure that we can actually generate the, the config we have just uh, re uh, created okay uh, let's let's take this lightning component just add a comma up my new uh, my new id of the doc config okay and select pdf so if i look at the c i perfectly have for every option that's there so for every car that's there i have now two times that's two cars so two times this block of course this doesn't show any of the sub products yet so this is the next step let's go and show some sub products okay back to our document what are we going to do we're going to add actually a table to show our sub products create a table again i do not want any spacing left or right so i'm just going to say in options remove all padding okay padding is zero um i actually do not want to see this table so i do not want to show any edges and what do I want to show in this table? I want to show my option packs. So these are the entertainment pack, the driving assistance pack, all of this stuff. That's the uh, that's the stuff that I want to see here. And at the bottom here, what maybe what I want actually is the cost, uh, the total cost that comes from my uh, from my quotes. And so, okay. See, I always copy paste it from another template. I have this template you can download as indicated from our academy. So now what we have is a table to repeat for every model, for every car. And we have a table to repeat for every option family that's linked to our car. Okay, let's quickly take a look at the edit lines to make sure that it's clear for, uh, for, for uh, everybody what we're going to do. So we want to show now these cars the top level cars and for every uh and for every um pack that's linked to these top level cars entertainment pack drive assistance pack we actually want to repeat this inner structure this table so that it will show nicely every table uh, every option family okay so every pack that we can add cool how do we do that Let's go back to our data source. And we want to now create a child data source on it. So just from data sources here, click new data source. Again, it's a SQL data source. We're gonna call it Academy um, Option Packs Training 1. Of course, it's a list of objects, so that's fine. It's linked to our main line item. That's important because we only we need to know which option packs are linked to which main line item. So let's save this one. Okay, and go here. Sockle Builder again. So I use the Sockle Builder for everything. <laughs> um, and again, we filter on quote line items. I said this can take a couple of seconds eh, because you can see lots of uh, objects here to filter on, but we're already there. Uh, just to double check, this is the quote line and this is the object to use. What are we going to do? We're going, of course going to filter on the quote that we select information from the right quote. So we're going to select this one already. We're going to select the record ID. I always do that. I always take the record ID with me. Um, I want to take the, let's take a look at our template. What else do we need? I want to take the uh, um, required by field. Yeah. Then I want to take the uh, product. Okay, follow the relation and take the product name. Okay, um, 
what else do I need? I think I'm there. I think I'm good. So what I now want to say is, of course, I want to full filter on the right quotes. Let's do that already. Um, and next up, I want to say, I want to link this data source to my parent data source. So I want to tell to the system that if I select this option packs, to which cars these options actually belong. Yeah. How do I do that? With these relationship settings. So I select the grouping field yeah, uh, used to relate this uh, object to our parent. We know that it's going to be the required by field. It's the required by field on my quote line that will indicate who is my parent. And on my parent, which uh, field resembles the required by, it's the record ID. So these, um, these option packs belong to a certain car if the required by equals the record ID. That's what I'm saying here. Okay, setting is done. So I have everything filled in automatically. Um, save my query, update the screen, everything looks great. So my data is now selected. Next step, PDF butter configuration. Again, I'm going to, uh, one second, I'm going to save my documents here and I'm going to upload it again. Okay, save the server. So the documents already uh, uploaded. Now on my uh, table here, I actually want to say uh, it's, a, I want to repeat a table in this outer table. So really build that structure there. So actually what I'm now going to say is that um, as a child of this outer table, I'm going to say that I needed to repeat an inner table. So again, use this plus here. I'm going to call this table option family. Um, it's of type table. Um, no, I do not want to use the, uh, the parent data source. I want to use the, okay, that was not smart. Of course, I need to, add, sorry, add the data source first as a child so it knows perfectly this relationship okay everything is there now now i can actually add the table configuration okay of type table no not a parent data source i want the option packs the merge fields to identify the table to repeat is option family i want to have a single spacing and no criteria this is done okay now, the only merge field that I have in this one is option family. So I want to fill that one with the name of my product. Okay, so this is the configuration. Save to server. Okay, let's take a look. Go back to our quote. I'm actually going to open this quote in a new tab. Um, click the button so it will now take all of the information oh, it's already there and this looks actually really good so I have my car here and I have my two packs on this car and I have my other car here and I have my my three packs on that car so this looks actually like exactly it's doing exactly as I wanted to do. We will work on the spacing a little bit more. You see some more spacing here, some less spacing there. So these are all settings we can perfectly handle. So uh, we will uh, tackle that and make it very nice and beautiful. Next up is uh, first the data and then the, uh, the look and feel. Next up is of course, now we have the option packs, but of course we wanna show in the option packs, just as this one, we actually want to show all of the options that are in these option packs. So you guessed it already. Let's go back to our documents here. I put an extra. Um, and in this table, I'm actually going to add an other table and, and even a new table. So I want to add a new table here. Um, yeah, it can show the, uh, the, the edges of this table. Um, I want the headers. So let's take, let's take, uh, let's make this one this color, for instance. 
let's say this is uh, option and price VAT exclusive. I want to have this at the outer side. Okay, and then what I actually want here is very cool, the option name and the option price. So again, here I want this at the outside. So now I have my option pack. Um, and now I want to say, I want to get all of the options linked to this option pack and all of the option packs linked to this car. Okay, let's call it a car instead of a model. So uh, car model. So let's do this. It's now saved. Okay, let's go back to Salesforce and get some data. Okay, let's take a look at the line items. See, so I have now in my documents my uh, my cars. I have my packs. And of course, now I have my, I want to see these uh, options now per pack in there. And of course, I also want to show, let's say um, I'm going to take the net total price to show. Okay, uh, let's go back. Let's go to uh, data sources. We are on the data source for the option pack. Now I want to add another child data source to this one. A new of types of call, of course, you could guess it already. And I'm gonna call this Academy um, Options Training One. So let's of course a list of objects. There are multiple possible. Okay, save it. Go to this uh, item, and we're going just gonna use again the query, the query builder. Sorry, the Sokol builder. To, uh, to do this, so we are on the options, cool. It's always the same thing. I always wanna go via the quote lines, so I'm just gonna, again, select quote lines here. It's filtering, one second, okay. Um, my quote line, select the object. I'm going to select the record ID. I always do that, add field. I'm going to select the required by. Okay, I need to select uh, what kind of information do we want to show, the option name and the option price. So I'm going to take the net total price as we agreed and I'm going to, 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 to uh, the product name. Okay, uh, for some reason I always go to the follow the relationship and I'm going to take the name from the actual product, not the name that's inside the uh, the quote line. Don't know why, it's uh, just a habit. So um, record ID equals my record ID, so this is the ID of the quote. Every quote line is linked to the quote, so Okay, let's add this one. And again, now I need to tell the system how these items are grouped, which options belong to which option packs. It's actually the same thing. Yeah? We know that this option belongs to this option pack. So this option will have a required by field saying that it's linked to this option pack. Okay, so if you wanna see that, let's take a look at the line items. And you can see the uh, option, uh, for instance, this option here. Okay, it has a required by, and this required by will say that it belongs to a certain option pack and the entertainment pack. And this required by will say that it's actually linked to the car. Uh, that's the, my model of the car that it's linked to. So. This is the relationship we have to tell the system to follow. So it's actually the exact same thing as before. We want to select the grouping fields that's on, on, the, uh, uh, on the documents. So this is the required by. That's uh, and which the required by has to be equal to which field of the parent. That's the record ID, of course. So settings are done. We can go to review. Everything is in, filled in here automatically. Save it. We are done. We can use this data source now. 
So next up, same thing here. Let's go to select the uh, the documents that we just uh, edited. Okay, because every time I have to upload it because I make changes to it. So now I want to tell the system to repeat this row. So first I have to identify the row. Okay. Um, so on this table, uh, under this table, I need to add now table row. Okay, it's not going to be of type single, it's going to be of type table row. Not use this, not, oh, again, the same error, sorry for that. Okay, I need to add, of course, the child one here. You can check this, everything is now correct. It's a currency, there is an ID field, all of the settings are done. You can see this um, this relationship of these uh, doc, uh, sorry, data sources right here. So let's go back and add this as table row. Option name, it's of type table row. Uh, we want to use the options uh, data source. Merge field is option name. Okay, so a little bit of the same. And now we want to use this option name, use it as a single, say that it has to go from the parent data source. So the parent data source is the option that I'm currently in because I'm looping through these options right now. Uh, I want to use the product name, merge fields. So which is where do I have to uh, fill in this, uh, this uh, name of this product? That's of course over here. Cool, Let that's done. Um, what else is there? Just gonna put a little bit down uh, on the option price. Oh, well, that's not what I wanted to do. So option price, let's also copy this one, add it here. It's a single, I'm looping through my options. So I'm gonna take the that data source. Uh, the net total, yes, I want it. Uh, um, uh, I want it formatted as a currency. Okay, and if you're wondering how it will format it, it's with this via the settings of the user in Salesforce or via the settings of your customer. If your customer has um, a field that indicates which uh, which country, uh, which language he speaks, then this can be used as uh, to format this uh, this currency. Okay. Coolness. So just gonna make a couple of changes just to make it look better. So I'm gonna say that I need some double spacing between the tables. So let's just leave some more room between the tables. I didn't think that was very nice. Okay, and I'm going to upload my document again. I added some extra spacing in there. So cool. Yeah. Everything checks out. So uh, when I click the save to server button, there's a complete validation done. Uh, a lot of checks to make sure everything is perfectly okay. So uh, when this says green, then I know it's gonna work. Cool. My quote, click the button again. Wait a second, ah, document is already there. So, and now. For some reason, the options are not there. So, okay, we have to investigate. But you already saw that the second model nicely comes to the second page because it doesn't fit to one page. Let me take a look what I've done wrong to uh, not select the, um, the correct, uh, probably an issue with the data source. Okay, I said where the ID is the record ID, which is of course incorrect. Huh? Everybody knows that the ID is not the record ID, but it's actually the quote. And I didn't select that field yet, so I need to select the quote as well. Add this field. Okay, now I can go to the filters. The quote field, the operator record ID. Add the filter. Okay, save the query. And let's do this again. That's how easy you can change these kind of things. Test it again, and I'm pretty sure it will all 
map out great now. So I have my car, I have my uh, uh, information, I have my option packs, all my options now. So this is actually all of my data coming from our, uh, uh, our CPQ. This is exactly the same kind of view that I had on my CPQ edit lines. And this is a structure that I want to bring to my customers. Cool. So if you take a look at this one, there is one more nice thing here. I have a picture. So why is this picture not on our example? So maybe we should maybe we should add that one. Let me show you if I go to this product here. If I go to related, I have a logo for every car. Keep this logo as small as possible. 20 kilobytes is already, uh, it's already a pretty big logo. Uh, four or five kilobytes for a logo is much nicer. Then your documents are, are uh, smaller. You use less storage in Salesforce. Your emails are smaller. Your customers are more happy and everything will work a, a lot faster as well. So in the end, I actually want to just want to take this logo from my file. Huh? It's a file logo and I want to show this on my documents. Cool. So let's first do that. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to split these cells. Okay. Oh, sorry. That was not a good idea. Um, what I'm going to do here is just, uh, I'm not going to split the cells. I'm just going to add a picture here. And I'm just going to say that the picture can actually just float over everything and then I can position it where I want. So I position it right in the corner of my documents over here. My picture will have uh, a certain name and that is required. So this is called car picture. So uh, very important because I need to have this name to know where I have to fill in the picture dynamically. Okay, save this already. Cool. Now go back to Salesforce and you know the drill already. Yeah? You know now that I have to select this picture and I need to tell the system how to get to this picture. So this is a little bit more tedious. So uh, uh, you can repeat this video as much as you want, of course. What I'm going to do first is now go back to my very first um, data source. So sometimes you have to refresh that one. Um, okay, so this is my top level data source for my main quote line items. System is not happy. What's going on? Okay, just a Salesforce hitch, it seems, but I'm there now. Okay, so my Salesforce was a little bit hanging, but now all is done. Um, now back, I'm going to go to the Stockel Builder, and I'm going to add a field. I'm going to add a field, the field that says which product I'm actually on, because my picture is linked to the product. So I'm going to add the field for the product. That's the identifier. Fast like this one, it will be the identifier of this product. So the API name will be, yeah. So it's a lookup towards product. So I added this field now. So now the system knows perfectly uh, how these uh, items are linked. Uh, sorry, which product I'm using. And now I'm going to again add a new child data source. So related to this product. I want to have, uh, I want to get all of the pictures. So it's going to be a picture list data source. Okay. I want to get it from files, uh, attachments. That's all outdated. I wanted to start with logo. Um, I'm going to call it Academy Logos Training One. Okay, it's linked to my uh, my parent, and now the of course I have to now fill in the field manually, and the field was uh, sbqq underscore underscore product underscore underscore c. 
So this was a field of my uh, uh, of my patterns, so my main quote light items, and my picture, my logo will be linked to uh, to this product and how to the system can identify the product is through this field. Okay, save. It's now done. The field is there. So only two small steps left. I'm going to uh, upload my file again. Save. Uh, next up is I'm going to add this uh, item here. What I'm not going to forget at this time is that I need to add my picture data source. I'm just going to reload this data source here. So there's a reload button. You can click it as much as you want. Because I added the field, the field product was not uh, here yet, but now I added it in my uh, data source. So I also need to add it to this configuration. And now I can add a second child. So it will already propose which child uh, the data source has. So I'm going to take the logos ones. So it perfectly knows now how, how all of these are uh, linked. Add it, and you can see that this, it's on the same level as the option packs, and the logos are also there. So now, as a child of this table, so that's the table that I'm going to repeat here, this entire table. Yeah, as the child of this table, I now want to say that it needs to get a picture out there. And of course, it wouldn't be PDF better if there is no uh, config type uh, called picture to do that. So there's only one data source that has pictures, so it already knows this one. And okay, I want to show the car picture. So the formatting ratio very important. Uh, I don't don't want to mess up my templates. So uh, I have some room to grow down. So actually, I want to say that the width has to be constant, and the height will be uh, um, will will scale following the ratio of the width. So. Even if my picture is a little bit higher than the uh, uh, the placeholder than I have here, the width will stay the same, but my picture can grow a little bit to the bottom. So that's fine. Okay, save the server. Let's take a look. Huh? Moment of truth. Click the button. And the document is there. It's just loading the previewer. And wow, as you can see, exactly what I wanted. I have my overview, I have my car, I have my option packs, all of this structure here. So nicely on the next page, my second car, the other picture. So my perfect structure. Only one thing left, the total price. And of course, I also want to have the uh, um, the quote number inside the, the document. So let's go back to my data source. Um, it's actually this one, I think. Yeah, this is the one. So what I need is the quote number. Okay, it's going to be the name. Uh, no, it's going to be the number. Yeah, at this field. And um, was there a total price? Uh, do I already have that one? Net total. Okay, yeah, I already have that one. So I uh, save the query. Cool. Everybody knows the drill already. Um, I just changed the data source. So I just have to quickly uh, go and reload this one. And you will see that now the number is also there, the quote number. Okay. Um, and let's add uh, some config types. Huh? So I want to add the total price. Oh no, sorry, it's not. Uh, it's always, of course, a child of the entire table. I want to add the total price. Yeah, from the parent data source, um, it's going to be the net total. Of course, I want it formatted. So total price. Okay, that's one. And I want to add another one. My data source, if I was not mistaken, had an, uh, the name of the file was uh, um, I wanted to handle. So I can just say the title. So there is an, uh, a config type called title. Data source is uh, 
Uh, okay, I cannot use that. So let's use the dates here. There is no uh, single data source, so that's why it's not. Uh, so I want to say that it's uh, today, and I want to show it short. Okay, cool. So now we have everything handled, everything managed, and final click of the button here. And I expect, so my document has the correct name. You can see that now the date is added into the name. Um, the overview is there. The pricing is there. The products are there. The branding is there. My colors, my logos, my car. Uh, yeah, what else can I say? Um, the entire document structure looks to be there. So what I've done here is actually in a couple of minutes, went from my edit lines, had this perfect overview in my edit lines on how my project is structured, how I sell this to my customer, how my pricing and my, and my information sits. So this structure I've now in a couple of minutes actually copied to a very rich document, a very powerful document. And I'm guess if you send out quotes like this, you will do a lot of more business. So, Thank you very much. If you have any questions, just send them to uh, info at pdfbutter.com uh, and we will answer them as quickly as possible. Hope you will enjoy this movie as much as I enjoyed making it.